first of all, if you have a question and you don't want to wait till the end, um, please tweet it with this hashtag and I will try to get back to you uh, after the talk. So, let's jump straight into it. Uh, before talking about the customizer, I want to have a look at what we had before. Um, so before we had theme options, which were um, pages that used uh, settings API to create like um, custom solution for managing the configuration, the look and the feel of your website. And they can, they could be like this, this is from the 2011 theme, or if you have built uh, custom theme options pages, you might have come, come across the Relax framework, which is a framework, framework that allows us to uh, create more advanced theme options. And uh, as we can see here, we have hundreds of options uh, hidden away behind those tabs or uh, under menus. We have uh, also like different CSS styling, and this uh, takes away the user from a creative experience in WordPress, and it's really confusing. So, some of these uh, disadvantages of these the emotion pages are the user, as we said, can get confused by all these the user interfaces. Uh, settings are not up to date, updated in real time. And this means that the user needed to uh, change their settings, save them, then uh, constantly switch back and forth between the front end and the back end to see the changes. Uh, and this also means that if someone was browsing the site, uh, with the, uh, we were uh, making those changes, they will see uh, these changes too. So this is not ideal. And for some changes, they might need a developer. And by this I mean that because it's easy for us, it doesn't mean that it's easy for uh, customers as well to use theme options. Uh, so they might eventually give up and call you and uh, then take the time away from you from building features. Uh, so as of WordPress 3.4, which was back in June 2012, I think, we have a new uh, site editing experience. Uh, the customizer has been introduced to WordPress. And uh, so what is the customizer? The customizer is basically a single page application inside the WordPress install. And it's basically split into two different sections. On the uh, left, we can see the control spanner where all our settings lives. And on the right, we see the preview of uh, our front-end website. The great thing about the customizer is that we can edit our website in real time. We can see what we're changing, where we're changing it. Uh, and also, we don't need to switch back and forth to see if these changes apply. And this means that we don't need to save them, and the uh, end user won't see them until we're happy with them and we publish them. So, Advantages are, as we said, we have the live preview. Uh, this also uh, helps with the same and surprise feeling, so users might uh, not know what they're changing, but with the customizer, they actually see what they're changing and what that change is affecting on the website. Uh, so we have we can drop schedule and publish changes. We have a consistent user interface and user experience because uh, we can switch themes and our users don't need to really learn how to use uh, their theme options and how to change their configuration. Another cool thing is that we can hide unnecessary options and we will see this uh, later on, but basically we can show only what's relevant so we won't have so too many tabs and the user will not get confused. And um, yeah, they are pretty straight, straightforward and easy to implement. And also, I don't know if you didn't know that, but they are uh, mandatory if you want to publish your theme on WordPress or what. And uh, personally, I think that it's a, 
it's good for premium Tinder developers as well because they can use it as a, a selling point. So they can provide their users with the free version uh, with the old theme uh, options uh, page and then say like, look, you've got the pro version which gives you this fantastic experience uh, for editing your website. Okay, so we've seen what the customizer is. Uh, let's see how it's made out of. Uh, so the customizer uses the object-oriented programming. Uh, and this allows us to make it more flexible and extensible. You don't need to be familiar with uh, the object-oriented programming to use it, but obviously the more you know, the easier it will be for you to understand what's going on and uh, how to extend it or how to fix bugs if you have problems. So uh, these components are panels, sections, controls, and settings. They are each uh, managed by a class. And uh, we also have a class, which is the WP Customized Manager, which is basically a wrapper on top of all the other components. And uh, it allows us to easily extend uh, uh, the customizer. And as we can see here, uh, the customized manager class gives us a uh, few um, methods, one for adding a component, one for getting a component, and one for removing a component. Okay, so the first component are in settings. Settings are basically the data that we store in the database, and they are managed by controls. And, uh, uh, we can find them in the WP Customized Setting class. So how do we add a setting? We hook into the Customized Register action, uh, which provides us with, uh, in, with an instance of the WP Customized Manager, which has a add setting method. We pass the setting ID as the first uh, parameter, and the second one is an array of uh, arguments. These arguments can be the type, which can be theme mode or option, we'll see the difference uh, shortly. Uh, we have the capability, so basically we can uh, restrict the access to our setting to uh, specific users. The theme support as well, flag, is uh, basically tells the customizer to show that setting only if uh, the current team supports a uh, specific feature. So, for example, if your team uh, supports the custom editor feature, uh, the customizer will run the custom editor uh, section to allow you to uh, manage your custom editor. Then we have the default value for our setting, uh, the transport method, which uh, is basically uh, a way to tell the customizer which strategy to use uh, to update the preview when our setting changes. And we also have a callback for validation and sanitizing. So, well, yeah, well, one thing to keep in mind is that these prefixes are reserved by core, so we can't use them. And, uh, yeah, as we said, there are uh, two setting types. One is theme mode, one is option. Theme mode basically uses the theme modification API uh, and it stores your data into a serialized array as a uh, single entry in the WP option table. They both save uh, our data in the WP options table but in two different ways. Uh, yeah, theme mode are specific to theme, with uh, options can be used with any themes or plugins, and uh, they are saved. Uh, into uh, that's a typo in the slide, <laughs> but they are saved into separate uh, entries. However, the customizer allows us to uh, pass key value arrays for options as well, so they can be saved as um, a single entry. Uh, but you don't have to stick with those, you can also add your own types, uh, either by subclassing the WP Customize Setting class or more easily, you can just pass the type uh, when you're registering your setting. But you should know that if you pass your own type, you need to uh, handle the preview and the update of your setting by yourself. And um, 
WordPress helps us with these two books that we can use, where the uh, setting type part is the name of, uh, of your setting. So how can we retrieve data? Basically, it's the same, but we have to use two different uh, functions. So if you use theme mode, you have the get theme mode function, otherwise you have the uh, more familiar get option. They both accept uh, the ID of our setting as the first parameter and the default value for the second one. Okay, the next component uh, are controls. They are managed by the WP Customized Control Plus and they are basically a user interface for our settings and they must be associated with settings. So how we are the our controls, we uh, use the app control method, we pass the setting ID as the first parameter and an array of arguments. These arguments can be the type, which is basically any um, HTML5 value input type, the priority in which they will be rendered in the uh, customizer inside of sections, the capability again, the section which is required and is the section uh, the control belong to. It can uh, be a core section or your own section. Uh, label and description speaks for themselves. Uh, the choices can be used with the radio type or the select type. And we can pass a key uh, value array where the key is the actual value that we're going to store in the database and the value is the label uh, that's shown in the drop down. If we need to pass custom HTML attributes, we can use the input attributes flag. The allow addition is only used with the drop down pages type, which is basically a select with all the pages we have on, on our website. And if we set this one to true, it will allow us to um, create a new page from directly from our control instead of going to the pages uh, in the admin. Um, and then we have our active uh, callback, which basically can, uh, we can show our uh, components only when they, they are relevant. Okay, so yeah, this is the, the types. So it's basically, as you can see, all HTML5 uh, input type is accepted. And you can also extend them. Core already provides us with a uh, few. Uh, there are more at that link. And you can also create your own uh, custom control. If you create your own custom control, uh, the way to register your control is a bit different. So this time we still use the add control method but we pass the, a new instance of the uh, color of uh, the control class, which accepts the customized manager instance as the first parameter, the setting ID as the second one, and an array of arguments as the third one, including any custom one. And this is how the color picker is rendering on the front end. Okay, next component uh, is sections, which are basically containers for controls. Uh, they are managed by the WP customized section and uh, they, one thing to note is that they only appear if there are controls uh, uh, related to it and uh, we use the add section method we pass the section ID as the first parameter and array of arguments as the second one again the priority in which they will be shown in our controls panel the panel, if they belong to, uh, to a panel you, we need to specify the panel ID here Capability, theme support, title description, uh, as we've already seen. The type, I think uh, it's only used by custom sections. I've never used it to be fair. Uh, we have the active code again. The description in the flag basically tells the customizer to, if set to true, it tells the customizer to hide the uh, section description behind the help icon so we can make more room inside the section. Uh, last component is panels, and they are containers for multiple sections or, uh, and, or like entire different functionalities. Uh, for example, the nav menus uh, panel or the uh, widgets panel. Uh, it's discouraged by the theme and look to 
use files to group different sections by actually using them uh, to, to group all my, my section, my theme. So, I think apparently it's pretty easy and it's not different from sections. The only thing that changes is the method that we use. This time it's our panel, the panel ID, and then the array of arguments is pretty much the same as the sections. Okay, cool. So we've seen what the customizer is, how to extend it, and so now we, we might expect the, that everything would be um, like real time and when we change the settings it will be instantaneous, but this is not the case. And this is because uh, of transport methods, which are basically a way to, to tell the customizer how to uh, re-render your changes. By default, they are set to refresh, which as the name may suggest is a full page reload. And uh, this can be pretty slow, as we see here, because we need to, to reload the entire uh, page every time we change a setting. And it's not very real time. Uh, and also, you might get away with it if you have a small site, but uh, if your site is bigger, uh, and there would be more things to load, so the experience would be slower. So, to overcome this issue, we could use the post message method, which is basically a method to enable, enable communication between the controls panel and the preview panel by the JavaScript. And as we can see here, when we change our site title, it's really instantaneous. Uh, unlike the refresh method, there are a few additional steps to follow to enable the post message transfer method. So in PHP, we need to set, obviously, the transfer method uh, flag to post message. Then we need to use JavaScript, and it's not nothing more difficult than this little snippet, which basically binds a setting to a specific uh, element on the page. So for example, in this case, when our blog name, which is a site title, changes uh, the element with the class of site title, we'll update this text. Uh, we also obviously need to enqueue our JavaScript file. We use the customized preview in it action and we need to make sure that we pass the customized preview and jQuery uh, scripts as dependencies. Okay, so this is great. It's uh, real time, it's instantaneous, it's cool, but there's a caveat for us developers. And the problem is that with post message, we need to duplicate our logic both in JavaScript and PHP. And this means that we are violating the fly principle. So repeat yourself. And uh, a bigger issue is that, let's say, for example, that your settings as a filter applied to it, or your content comes from a WP query. This kind of stuff are really difficult to uh, reproduce in JavaScript. That's why, as of uh, WordPress 4.5, uh, a new uh, framework has been introduced to the customizer, and this is the Selective Refresh Framework, which basically allows us to uh, render a specific part of our, uh, of our site. And so we just need to reload those, those, those parts and not the, the, old, um, the old page. And this is done by uh, Ajax, so we make Ajax calls to fetch the render PHP. So the yeah, advantages are that we have a cleaner code base because we are respecting the prior principle our code is more readable and uh, maintainable. We have a more accurate preview, preview update, because as I said, if uh, sometimes with the post message, uh, the result that you see in the customizer is not actually uh, the result that you will see on the front end. And this is because, as I said, uh, your setting might have a filter applied to it. And uh, yeah, we can also associate uh, parts of the preview the related controls. 
So we can see here we have a little icon next to our description, and we click it, we are taken to the right section in the customizer, and we can start editing it. Uh, and this is so cool that it's, uh, it's also used by widgets. So but before seeing that, we uh, have a look at how we register our patient. Uh, so we use the R partial uh, method. We pass the setting ID as the first parameter, and array of arguments as the second one. Which accept the selector, which is uh, basically the element on the page. So it can be a class or an ID or a tag, whatever you want. The container inclusive flag, if set to true, tells uh, the customizer to refresh the whole container. If set to false, it will refresh only the content. Uh, the render callback, which takes care of uh, rendering our content. And the pullback. Uh, refresh, which is set to true by default, and basically tells the customizer that if anything goes wrong, it will have to reload the whole page. So as I spoiled before, we widgets are uh, com compatible by default. You just need to add uh, support uh, to your team, and all core widgets will work out of the box. However, if you have uh, custom widgets, you will need to do few stuff. The first one is to set the customized selective refresh widget flag to true when you are constructing your uh, WP widget class. And you also need to make sure to enqueue your scripts unconditionally so that the page don't need to reload the page. Um, the customizer don't need to reload the page to fetch the CSS changes. So. <laughs> He's happy about it. Okay, so there's more that we can do to enhance the experience of our users. We can make our components uh, contextual. And by this, I mean that if we have options that are dedicated to specific pages, we can show them only when the user is previewing those pages. Or we, we can create dependencies between those options. So we can see uh, in, on the 2017 theme, these controls on the home page. And if we switch to the about page, it will be hidden away. Uh, the same with like on the home page, we have our work and from custom section, custom panel, sorry. And then when we switch to the about page, it's gone because it's not relevant anymore. Uh, you can use basically any core function or your custom function. That's one thing to note is that uh, the active call that receives the customized manager instance as the uh, first argument. So, for example, if you're using, in this case, this page, which accepts the page ID or the title as a uh, first argument, you need to use either an anonymous function or uh, create your own function to wrap that uh, core functionality. Another cool thing that we can do is uh, validate uh, settings. So before WordPress 4.6, we only had uh, sanitizing for a uh, section. And this means that with sanitization, uh, we clean the values, that, uh, the input of the user, just before we are saving it to the database. And if something goes wrong, the, the user is not uh, notified. So it, might not know what, what went wrong. As of WordPress uh, 4.6, as I said, we have uh, validation, and uh, validation takes place before uh, settings are saved. If the, uh, the input is not valid, the same request is rejected, and uh, uh, a notice has been uh, uh, shown to the user to tell them what went wrong. See here that we have a custom control. We only accept integers. So we see you must apply a value here. We can add a value here. If our value is less uh, than 1900 or uh, greater than uh, 2018, uh, there is uh, too new or too old. And 
when we publish the customizer projects or changes. So we know what we need to, to fix. Uh, another thing about the customizer and the one cover this today is that it has a really robust JavaScript API. You can basically do whatever you want. Uh, for example, you can uh, dynamically show an eye controls based on another setting value. So let's say, for example, you have a slider, and you have a flag to say activate slider. When it's uh, set to yes, you can show uh, a control for the image or one for the text. When it's set to no, those controls will be hidden away. Uh, another cool thing that you can do is you can navigate to a URL when you click on a section, or you can focus parts of uh, uh, the preview area. Uh, so, here is the uh, JavaScript API section in the customized API handbook, or if you want to dig into the core, uh, into the code, you can go there. And there's this talk by Western Rattle, which is basically the lead developer for the customizer. Uh, he gave this talk at WordCamp US last year, and it's really, really cool. I highly recommend you to watch it. Okay, so. Now I just want to show you a few features of the customizer. So one thing that we can do is we can change and preview themes, either uh, install themes or themes from the WordPress or uh, repo. So for example, we can install this theme and preview it. Okay, here we can see that theme. We can start. Editing. If we don't like it, we just go back to the theme. Uh, another cool functionality is that we can preview a site on tablet and smartphone. These little icons down here. Or we can, for example, create a new pages directly from the customizer. So here we can add a new item, we can create a new page. Okay, and add it. Uh, note that these are just tabs, so you will need to add the actual content later. Uh, another cool thing is the CSS section where you can basically add your CSS. This can be dangerous. So I usually uh, disable it because end user don't need it. <laughs> but if you need it, it's there. And the cool thing is that now we have some. Um, Uh, how's it complete? And uh, it also has a linter. So it says unknown property background. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's because I wanted to show the, the linter. So it tells us what's wrong. We can change it. Cool. Uh, so 
one thing that's been added by on the WordPress 4.9 uh, is the change set. So we can now save our changes as drops. Uh, we can schedule them. Um, the cool thing is that we, if we, for example, save this change, we can use the this URL to. show our website with the actual changes to a client. This is good because, for example, if uh, our client asks us to, to make a, a change, we can do those changes, show them with this link, and wait for their, their approval to actually publish them. Uh, and we can also restart the changes. Uh, we also have uh, the Log feature, so for example, in post, you know that when someone is editing a post, uh, you see a little uh, notice, uh, look like it's editing a post. Now we have the same for the customizer. Cool, so here we have a um, few resources. We share the link to the slide on Twitter after the, uh, the talk. So you might be wondering, should we use the settings API or the customize API? Uh, well, I'll say use both, because they, they serve different purposes. So uh, if you don't need, if your settings uh, don't need to affect the front end, go with the settings API, otherwise always use the customizer. Take from me. Thank you very much.